Welcome. In this video, we're going to explore some pre-existing modules that implement rational numbers, complex numbers, and then also polynomials. The first two modules are part of the Haskell standard library, so we can just go ahead and import them without any trouble, whereas the last module for polynomials is something that we'll have to install in order to use it. The goal of this video is basically to show you how you would use modules that other people have written in order to, well, use the functions they contain in your own code. Let's start out by importing uh, the two modules for rational numbers and complex numbers. So the first one is called data.ratio, and it implements ratios of uh, integral numbers. And then we also import uh, data.complex, which uh, implements the complex numbers. Now, whenever we use uh, existing modules and we know which module we are using, it's a good idea to have a look at the documentation. The place to go uh, for documentation on Haskell packages is Hackage, which is the Haskell package repository. Here, there's a search field up top, which you can enter any sort of search term in, and that will give you a list of packages whose description matches the search term. However, in our case, if we like enter ratio or something like that, then we'll get a bunch of packages uh, here which implement ratios, and none of them is this uh, data.ratio, which is part of the base uh, library. Hence, if you're searching for a specific either uh, package or function, then the best place to look for this is uh, with Hoogle. So here, if I uh, type in data.ratio, uh, I see here I get this uh, module here, and if I click on uh, well, the module data.ratio, it'll take me to the corresponding um, hackage documentation page. So let's have a look at the, the documentation for data.ratio. So the description of this module here is that it's standard functions on rational numbers. And then we have uh, documentation down here. So the first line here defines uh, the data type for ratios. So these implement, well, rational numbers whose numerator and denominator is of some integral type. So in principle, for uh, general ratios, uh, you can insert any sort of integral type A here. However, if we scroll down further, we see that there's a type synonym, rational, defined, which is ratios of integers. And here the description is uh, arbitrary precision rational numbers represented as the ratio of two integer values. And then it says here, a rational number may be constructed using the percentage uh, sign operator. And this is the, in fact, the next function we have down here. So percentage is an infix operator, which allows us to convert two integral a's to a ratio. Now during the construction of such a ratio, uh, this function automatically reduces the ratio down to its minimal form. So it'll cancel out any common divisors that the numbers have. If we scroll down further, we see that there are some additional functions uh, implemented for ratio. So we have a function called numerator and denominator, which gives us the numerator and denominators of numbers. And then we have this approx rational function, which allows us to approximate any given number to a specific uh, degree of accuracy in terms of a, a rational number. Okay, and with that, actually, the documentation page finishes. So you might wonder where all of the other functions are that we like to use. And in fact, these are part of the type classes uh, that uh, ratio is an instance of. So uh, if you go look here, we have data ratio. It's instance of the following type classes. For instance, it's uh, instance of the num type class. And therefore, it has all the methods that uh, nums have. For instance, we have addition, uh, subtraction, multiplication, negation, and so on. Now that we uh, have some overview over what we can do with these rational numbers, let's explore this in GHCI. So for this, I'm going to uh, load uh, my script, which has the corresponding import statements, and now I can use uh, these rational numbers. So as we saw in the documentation, the basic way to construct rational numbers is using this percentage symbol. So I can, for instance, construct the rational number three halves. Moreover, if we uh, can somehow cancel out certain terms in the ratio we are given, then 
the operator here, this percentage symbol, will, will do that. So it reduces the fraction 6 fourths to, down to uh, 3 halves. Moreover, we can also perform arithmetic uh, with fractions. So I can, for instance, add uh, 1 fourth uh, to, let's say, 3 fifths, and the result is 17 twentieths. And similarly, I can perform any other sort of uh, arithmetic operation on these objects. Finally, a very helpful function is uh, from rational, which allows me to convert um, a, a rational number here into a floating point number. This is especially helpful if you have very large uh, fractions with large numerators and denominators, and you want to see exactly uh, how big those numbers are. In order to give you some opportunity to explore this rational uh, number data type, I'm going to give you the following task, which is to implement Newton's method for rational numbers. So here I've opened up the Wikipedia article for Newton's method. So it says here, Newton's method um, is a method, well, for finding roots of some function which you can differentiate. And maybe I should go down to this uh, picture here to explain how it works. So the idea is we want to approximate the root of this blue function here. So we want to find the point where this blue line intersects the, the coordinate axis. Now the way that uh, Newton's method works is you pick some arbitrary point that is near the root of the function. So that's uh, xn here. And then you go up and calculate the value of the function at that point. So this gives you this black point, which is on the blue curve. And in coordinates, this point has coordinates xn and f of xn. And now what you do is you uh, take the tangent at the blue curve, so that's this red line here, and you can do that by calculating the derivative. So this tangent line, you take this tangent line and you intersect it with the x-axis. And this intersection point here is now called xn plus 1. And if you observe in the picture, xn plus 1 is closer to the real root of this function than xn was. And the idea is now that you repeat uh, this operation uh, many times. So you now take xn plus 1 as your uh, value. You again calculate the value of the function at xn plus 1, you take the tangent line and intersect it with the x-axis, and this gives you xn plus 2, and so on. So in this way, you construct a sequence of points, which ideally should converge towards the, the root of uh, the function. Now, mathematically, the way uh, you calculate xn plus 1 and so on is by using, well, the derivative of the function, which describes the slope, so if you notice the, well, the slope of this red line is precisely the derivative of the function f at the point xn. And therefore, well, you can uh, write down this formula here. So the derivative at the point xn, which is just the slope, is, well, given by uh, calculating the slope of this, this red line in a different way. Namely, you can calculate the slope of this red line as this distance here going from f of x n down to uh, 0. So this distance here is just f of xn. That's what's uh, written here, f of xn minus 0. And then you divide this height by the, by sort of the width of this triangle. And the width of this triangle is xn minus xn plus 1, like this. So we can calculate the slope of this red line in two ways. One way uses the derivative, and the other way uses the fact that we know uh, the function value at xn, and we also have this xn plus 1 point here. Now, given this equation here, you can solve it for xn plus 1, and this gives you a recursive formula, which says that xn plus 1 is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. Therefore, with this recursive formula here, if you have a starting point x0, you can calculate x1, and then you can calculate x2, and so on, and you can go on as long as you want. And now if your function is nice enough, uh, then this method will always converge towards uh, one of the roots of the function. And in fact, uh, in most cases, convergence is really fast, 
so here it says uh, if the zero is of multiplicity one, the convergence is at least quadratic, which is a very fast rate of convergence. The only issue with this method is that you have to pick some x zero, and well then it'll find like a root nearby. And so if you don't know where the root you want to find precisely lies, then you have to do some kind of guesswork or somehow narrow down uh, the points which you might choose for x zero. Okay, so if you want to learn more about this method, then you can uh, read about it in this uh, Wikipedia article. But we're basically just going to use this formula here. So xn plus one is equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn in order to write a function that performs Newton's method. So for convenience, let me uh, write this down here. So we have uh, this Newton's uh, method and the formula that we're going to be using is that the next point, which I'll just call here x1, is equal to x0 minus um, fx, like so, divided by f prime x, where f prime is the derivative of f. Okay, now in order to implement this in a function, well, there are several possibilities. Uh, the basic difference between these different uh, possibilities is how we determine when we stop iterating. So one way, and this is perhaps conceptually the easiest, is just to stop once you iterate for a certain number of times. And so this will be the, the first function we're writing. So it'll take um, a function which takes a rational number and outputs a rational number like this. So this will represent the function f. And then we'll also feed uh, this function the derivative of f. So in general, uh, we can't calculate the derivative of an arbitrary uh, Haskell function. So we'll need to explicitly give our Newton method also the derivative of f. And then uh, furthermore, we give it a starting value. So that'll be again, a rational number. And then we give it an int, which will represent the number of times we want to uh, perform the update step. And finally, the return value uh, will be a rational number, like so. Okay, so this will be our first uh, implementation of the Newton uh, method. And then we'll have a second version as well, which works with a tolerance. So here, instead of saying explicitly how many times I'm going to run the function, I'm instead going to provide a certain level of accuracy I want to achieve in the approximation. So I'm going to write down the type signature for this. So it'll be called, let's say, Newton2. And again, it'll take, well, these two uh, functions, the first one being the function f and the second one being the derivative of f. Then it'll also take a starting value. But now instead of taking an integer, which represents the number of times we iterate the function, it'll take another rational number, which will uh, express the degree of accuracy I want to have in my approximation. And finally, it'll again uh, output a rational number. So let me here put this stuff on a new line so that it's a bit uh, more readable, uh, like so. Okay, so I'll now give you uh, some time to think about how you would write implementations of these two ideas. Again, if you have questions concerning the Newton method, you can go check in the Wikipedia article. Um, I hope that I've explained clearly enough uh, how these functions should work. Again, the first one should just take the function f along with its derivative. Uh, it should take a starting value x0 and an integer representing the number of times you want to iterate the function. And then you just uh, iterate the function that number of times and return uh, like the last uh, xn. So that'll be again a rational number because this formula here uh, only uses uh, rational operations. And then the second method here works the same way, except that this argument we give it is the precision we want. And so at each step, we want to compare the current xn with the next one, xn plus one, and see if we've reached the desired uh, precision. So you want to like take a difference and measure the absolute value of that. And if that is less than uh, your desired precision, then you just output xn plus one. And otherwise you uh, perform additional uh, steps to calculate additional uh, elements of the sequence. Okay, so I hope you've given this task some thought. Um, I'll now proceed to showing you how you could write implementations for these uh, ideas.
So I'm going to comment out this uh, second function so that I can uh, work on the first one. So um, here uh, we have a base case. So we're going to say what Newton f uh, and f prime uh, with starting value x zero does when we give it the value zero. So in this case, we are basically iterating Newton's method zero times. So in that case, we should just return the starting value x zero. On the other hand, if we call this function uh, with, uh, well, a non-zero number of iterations, so let's call this n, well, then I just want to, uh, well, update it one additional time as compared to when I would call it with a uh, parameter n minus one. So here I'll just use recursion. So one way I can write this recursion is as follows. So I can say, uh, what I want to do is I want to, well, calculate x minus um, fx divided by f prime x, where x is the value that I get uh, from running this uh, function uh, n minus one times. So it will be Newton f, f prime uh, x zero uh, n minus one, like so. Uh, and this is of course the value uh, x here. Okay, so the recursive step here is basically calculating the value of xn, right? That's what this n here is standing for. And it's doing so based on the value of xn minus one. So xn minus one is obtained by performing the Newton procedure n minus one times. And so here I'm calling xn minus one just x. And then I will use the formula uh, above here for Newton's method in order to calculate the next value in the sequence. Okay, so let's give this a uh, try. So in order uh, for us to apply this method, we have to have some function of which we want to find the root. So let's, um, well, write down a function which will allow us to find the value of square root two. So here I choose f um, to be well, the following function, I just let uh, f of x be uh, x squared minus two. And now the root of this function would be uh, square root two, right? If you solve this equation for x, then you get square root two. And furthermore, I also have to define uh, the derivative. So in this case, the derivative of this uh, function x squared minus two is just two times x. And here I'm defining them in the script, so I don't have to always constantly retype them. I can now test out my function. So if I apply f to uh, square root two, I would expect to get a value of zero, and I get a value that's uh, basically uh, zero up to some very small number because of floating point arithmetic mistakes. So that's good. And well, f prime should just be multiplication by two. So for instance, f prime of two is four. So that's also fine. Okay, so now I want to use my Newton method function here, uh, apply it to f and f prime in order uh, to approximate the value of square root two. So I'm going to type uh, Newton f f prime because uh, that's just the names of the functions I'm applying uh, the Newton method to. Now I need to choose some starting value so let's uh, choose a starting value of one. The reason I'm choosing one here is because it's closer to square root two than it is to minus square root two, which is also a root of, um, of f. And next I need to give it a number of iterations. So let's uh, choose five here. So if I now run the function, I get this uh, fraction, which has very big numerator and denominator. So it's hard to tell whether this is close to the actual value of square root two or not. And so in order to convert it uh, to a floating point number, I'm going to use the from rational function. And then I'll use this dollar sign operator uh, in order for me to not have to put brackets around uh, the second part. Um, so I don't have to put brackets around this entire Newton f f prime one five here. Okay, so if I do that, I get uh, the floating point approximation of this uh, rational number here. And if we compare this to the computed value of square root two using the square root function, you see it's identical. 
So this means that within five iterations, uh, the Newton method actually produces a number which is indistinguishable from uh, the well computed value here of square root two. And it's indistinguishable with the number of digits we have for, for these doubles. We can see how uh, much we can reduce uh, the number of iterations and still get a reasonable approximation. So if we just do two iterations, you see we get a value that's correct up to like three decimal points. And if we do uh, three iterations, we get a value that's uh, correct up to like uh, five decimal points or something like that. Now if I do four iterations and again calculate square root two so we can compare these, see these are not quite equal. So the, uh, the last uh, five digits here are different. So in fact, five iterations is the first time we get like an indistinguishable result up to the precision that these uh, doubles represent. But that's still pretty impressive because in just five runs of this, of this method, you actually get a very uh, good approximation of square root two. Okay, well now of course we could uh, run this uh, Newton's method with other functions as well. And in principle, you can use this to approximate any sort of uh, root of a reasonably uh, nice uh, function. So we could calculate all sorts of square roots and uh, higher order roots uh, using this method. I'll now turn to the second version of this function, which I'm calling Newton2 here, which instead of uh, prescribing the number of times we run the function will work with a uh, precision value. So uh, Newton2 here again takes uh, arguments f and f prime and the starting value, but now instead of taking a number of iterations, it takes a uh, degree of precision, which I'm calling eps for, for epsilon. Now the idea behind uh, this function is we want to compare um, the next value in the sequence with our current value and see whether we've reached the desired precision or not. So the precision describes how far apart the two values in the sequence are. And we hope that if the, this value is small, then we're also close to the actual root um, because, well, the, the values should be converging to the root and therefore if they are, aren't very far apart, like uh, values that succeed one another, then also we should be uh, getting closer to the root. Okay, so how do we uh, do this? So here I need to somehow compare the previous value with the next value. So let's uh, write the comparison function here. So in order to compare two values, I'm going to use the absolute value function. And then I'm going to take the difference of these two values. Now here we only have one value, basically we have x zero. So we have uh, the value we started with and the idea will now be to calculate the next value and check whether this is uh, more or less than epsilon apart from x zero. So I want to compare x zero with x one where x one is uh, the value I get by iterating Newton's method. So here I can write where uh, x one is equal to x zero, and then I use the, the formula. So f of x zero uh, divided by uh, f prime of x zero, like so. And now I want to check whether this is strictly less than my uh, value epsilon. So if, if this is indeed the case, well then I want to just return uh, the value x one. So if I've reached my desired uh, degree of accuracy between uh, these successive elements in the sequence, then I return uh, the next value. Okay, so I stop the process. On the other hand, if I don't have the desired degree of precision, well, then I need to, uh, well, iterate. I need to somehow uh, do the whole process again. And now because we're not, uh, don't have this argument n, I can't just like say, I want to do the, the method again. But what I can do is I can replace the starting value of, uh, of this function. So instead of starting at x0, I can just run the function again, but now starting at x1. And then x1 will become like the new starting value. So x1 will become the new x0. And then I calculate a new x1, which would be like x2, and uh, just repeat like that. So the way to replace the starting value is I run uh, Newton 2 again with f and f prime. 
But now with x1 in place of x0, and I keep my uh, degree of accuracy here, eps. Okay, so that concludes the, the second version of uh, this Newton's method function. So here I'm just uh, iterating Newton's method until I have a uh, distance between successive members in the sequence that is less than epsilon. Let's uh, reload and make sure that uh, this also works uh, for calculating square root 2. So in this case, I'm going to run uh, from rational Newton 2 f f prime. Here I again start at the value 1, and now I have to give it some desired degree of precision. So here I'm going to, let's say, give it uh, 1 over 1,000. So I want to iterate the method until the successive members in the sequence are 1 1,000th apart. Okay, if I do that, then I get a result, which at least to the first few uh, decimal places looks like square root 2. We can see that, in fact, uh, we do have uh, accuracy of in up to the uh, first five uh, decimal places. So here uh, we've reached this degree of accuracy, at least, even though this isn't describing really the distance from uh, square root 2, it's just describing the distance between uh, two members in the sequence. But if I want, I could, well, increase the accuracy here, and if I, if I do that, then eventually I reach uh, a result that's indistinguishable from, from the actual value of square root 2 as computed by the square root function. Okay. Maybe let me put this uh, definition of the f's. Let me put that uh, up here in the preamble. And then we have uh, these two functions here, which you can uh, look at again for your reference, like so. Next, I'll show you how we can use the data.complex module in order to work with complex numbers in Haskell. For this, we again go to the documentation on Hackage. So here's the documentation page for data.complex. So the description just says complex numbers. And we see here that this data type has uh, the following constructor. So it uses this uh, colon plus in order to form a complex number. And the, well, the first part is the real part of the complex number, and the second is the imaginary part. And similar to, well, the other types we saw, we have a bunch of instances. Uh, in particular, we have a uh, instance of num, so we can add and subtract and multiply and so on these complex numbers. Then we also have uh, some special methods for complex numbers. So we have a method that calculates the real and imaginary parts of a complex number. And then we have a bunch of functions that work with polar uh, forms of complex numbers. For instance, this make polar here will generate a complex number based on its uh, polar coordinates. Or uh, conversely, you can also use this polar function here that uh, well takes a complex number and returns the polar coordinates of the of that complex number. Okay, so let's uh, start up GHCI and uh, load our script here uh, numbers to see how these complex numbers work. So as we saw in the documentation, you can construct complex numbers using this colon plus. So this number here represents uh, 3 plus 4i. Then if you want to, for instance, get the polar coordinates of this number, uh, you can use the polar function. So these are the polar coordinates of 3 plus 4i. So you can see that the, the magnitude or the length of this uh, vector viewed in R2 is 5. And uh, it has uh, this angle here, which is uh, given in radians. Then if we want, we can like multiply complex numbers with each other. So let's uh, make sure that um, i squared is in fact minus 1. So that's indeed the case. That's good. And in fact, uh, many other uh, functions are uh, implemented for complex numbers. For instance, you can take exponentials of complex numbers. So uh, the exponential here um, of 0 um, plus pi 
is, uh, well, nearly minus 1. So you can see it's minus 1 plus some very, very small imaginary parts. So this is coming from inaccuracies in uh, the exponential function and pi here, and uh, floating point arithmetic. But so basically this, uh, this shows uh, Euler's identity that e to the i pi is equal to minus 1. All right, so really I don't have a bunch more to say about this. These things are complex numbers. You can do the usual stuff you can do with complex numbers with uh, this implementation. And as you see, uh, well, many of the functions you would use to uh, write programs that use these complex numbers will, will work out of the box. And I'll now move on to the next part of the video where we're going to explore a module which implements polynomials. So here, um, in contrast to these modules which are part of the base library, we actually have to install something in order for the import to work. So I'm going to type uh, import data.poly. And here poly is a module which uh, implements polynomials, but it's, as I mentioned, not part of the base library. So if you just type import data.poly into, uh, into the code like so, it should uh, be underlined in red and your script will stop compiling because, uh, well, GHC won't be able to find uh, the module you're referring to. So therefore, before being able to uh, import this, you need to uh, run a command in the terminal. And the command you need to type in is cobol install and then dash dash lib and then uh, poly. So uh, the place to put this is not in GHCI, but rather in the usual terminal you get if you open up a new terminal session. So if I uh, copy and paste this here into the terminal, uh, into this new session, um, I see it uh, processes a bit. It says resolving dependencies. And for me, it just says up to date because I've already installed it. However, on your system, it uh, will install quite a bunch of stuff because uh, this library of polynomials here has a bunch of dependencies which also need to be installed in order for it to work. Now once you've uh, successfully installed this library here, probably you'll need to close and reopen VS Code in order for um, the import statement no longer to be underlined in red. And in that case you should also be able to, uh, if you open a GHCI, you should also be able to load uh, the script without any uh, errors. Okay, so let's um, look at the documentation of this polynomial library in order to get an idea of what it does. Before that, maybe I should explain how I uh, found this library. So whenever you want to find a library that does something uh, you want to do, and a good idea is to search for it uh, here on Hackage. So uh, you can type in polynomial, for instance, in the search field. And then you'll get a bunch of, uh, of well, packages that implement polynomials. And for instance, there's this one package here called polynomial. There's also another one called poly. And uh, then you have some information on these various packages. For instance, uh, the poly package is much newer than the polynomial one. And it also has uh, more downloads recently over the last 30 days. Now, if you find a package that seems like it might be doing what you want it to do, uh, you can go to the documentation. Here you see that uh, this package has several modules, one of them being this data.poly, which we're going to import. And then we have some additional uh, description for the packages. So here there's a readme for this package. So it says here it's a library uh, backed by uh, vectors. So it's based on some other uh, data type for vectors. And here we see some code examples, for instance, for univariate polynomials. So in order to uh, write a polynomial, we can just use uh, this X constructor here. Now, one thing to watch out for with these polynomials is that we additionally have to specify what type they are. And in this package, there are two types. One's called vpoly and the other upoly. And upoly is more efficient, but only works for certain data types like ints. So here you can only have ints as coefficients, whereas if you want to have integers as coefficients, you have to use a vpoly. If we scroll further down, we have this section on construction. So here it says the simplest way to construct a polynomial is using this pattern x. Uh, 
So we can write uh, these types of polynomial expressions with a capital X. And as long as we declare the type here, it, say, it says, unfortunately, types are often ambiguous and must be given explicitly. So as long as we declare what type we want this to be, uh, then this will, in fact, construct a polynomial. Now, if we go to the documentation of data.poly, so that's the module that's part of this package, then we can see what uh, type of instances uh, these polynomials have. In particular, there are instances of num, as you can see here. So we can add, subtract, and multiply polynomials and so on. Moreover, in the method section, there is also uh, certain functions which are interesting. For instance, we have this eval function, which allows us to evaluate a polynomial at a given point. Uh, moreover, we have this substitution, so we can substitute one polynomial into another. And important for our purposes is this derivative here. So we can take the derivative of a polynomial using deriv, and we can also compute integrals of polynomials if we wanted to. Finally, there's also a, well, a division, polynomial division with remainder implemented, which uh, might be interesting. With that knowledge in hand, let's return to GHCI to try this out. So if we copy the examples from uh, the documentation, then we should be able to construct polynomials using the following type of expression. So I should be able to write things like uh, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then I need to specify what type uh, this has. So in this case, let's say I want it to be a v poly rational. So it should be a polynomial with rational coefficients. And then this works. So I get a polynomial whose well coefficients are 1 over 1 here, and 3 over 1 here, and 2 over 1. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work to put directly rational numbers as coefficients in the polynomial. So if I do things like uh, 1 third uh, times x squared, and I want this to be a, a v poly uh, rational, uh, this returns an error. And I think this uh, pattern x thing here uh, doesn't seem to work with, uh, with these types of expressions for uh, rational numbers. So here it's complaining because it thinks that the multiplication here should be happening between two polynomials, but it somehow doesn't know how to interpret this thing as a uh, polynomial. Okay, so there's some uh, limitation here with uh, trying to express polynomials with rational coefficients. However, we can form them using a monomial, which is a function which takes an exponent and the coefficient, so I can uh, do monomial 2 1 third and want this to be of type v poly rational. Uh, in this case, it does indeed return the polynomial with uh, 1 third x squared and the remaining coefficient 0. So in principle, if I wanted to construct polynomials with rational coefficients, I could construct a bunch of monomials and then add them together. Or there's another function in the library that allows you to convert a vector of coefficients into a polynomial. So maybe that would be the way to deal with that. However, in these uh, examples here, so these functions are just polynomials with integer coefficients. So uh, we can use a v poly integer or construct v poly rationals with just the integer coefficients like I showed above, uh, which seems to work. Now, the last part of the video will improve our Newton's method functions uh, in such a way that we don't always have to additionally give it the derivative of the function we're trying to apply Newton's method to. So we're going to write new versions of uh, Newton and Newton 2 using polynomials. And here, because we have a way to take the derivative of a polynomial uh, in this library, we can uh, just give it the single polynomial. And then as part of the, the function, we can calculate its derivative. So we don't need to have this complicated a type signature where we give it a function and the derivative of the function. Rather, we can just give it a, the polynomial a starting value, and for this uh, first version, the number of iterations. So I'll write down the type signatures for these uh, functions, which I'll be calling Newton poly and Newton poly 2. So Newton poly will take some uh, v poly uh, rational, or it could also be a v poly integer, it doesn't really matter. And then we also give it a starting value, which will be a rational number. And finally, uh, we uh, give it an int, which will be the number of iterations. And then we output uh, the approximation, which will be a rational number. 
And similarly, uh, Newton poly 2 will be the same type of thing, but instead of having a number of fixed iterations, we provide a, a certain tolerance. So this will again, will take a V poly rational uh, along with a rational number, which represents the starting value, then another rational number, which represents the tolerance we want, and it'll output a rational number. Okay, so I'll uh, give you some time here to think about how you would uh, implement these functions uh, using, well, polynomials and, well, taking the derivatives uh, inside the function directly. And now my hint is to uh, reuse the uh, functions we already have, so Newton and Newton2. So basically, Newton poly should just call Newton using, well, the polynomial as the function and its derivative. Uh, however, in order for uh, you to be able to evaluate the polynomial, so treat it as a function, you'll have to also use the eval uh, method, which is provided in the, in the uh, module. So basically, the two things you'll need to be using are eval and uh, derivatives. Okay, so I'll let you think about these tasks on your own for a while. And I'll now uh, present the solution. So as I said, the idea is just to use the existing uh, functions. So Newton poly p of x0 and n, like this, so that's all the arguments we need, should essentially just call Newton. Um, however, now we need to say what f and f prime are. So f and f prime go here, and then we call it with uh, x0 and n, like so. Now f should just be uh, evaluating the polynomial at the corresponding value. So one way I can write this is I could write uh, x uh, maps to uh, the, the function eval, right, which uh, we saw in the documentation takes a polynomial and the value and evaluates the polynomial at that value. So let's maybe go back to the documentation to see exactly uh, what the order of the arguments is. So we have this function eval here, which takes a polynomial along with a value and evaluates the polynomial at that value. Okay, so the right thing to write here is eval px, like so. And then we also need uh, f prime, right? So f prime is the same, just we use the derivative of uh, p instead of uh, p itself. So I'm going to eval uh, the derivative of p at x. So eval, and then there was this function deriv uh, p, and I'm going to do that at x. Now this is uh, gives me the, the function f prime. Now on both sides here of this uh, equality, I have the arguments x0 and n, and so these are redundant. I can get rid of them to make this a bit nicer. And moreover, uh, this uh, function here, so these anonymous functions are also more complicated than they need to be. The reason is that here, well, what does this function do? Well, it takes an x and it does eval p of x. So this is equivalent to just uh, writing the partial evaluation eval p. And similarly here, this anonymous function, well, it takes an x and it does eval derive p of x. And so uh, this is also equivalent to just this uh, partial application of eval to derive p. So if I want, I could uh, replace here these anonymous functions just with uh, eval p, and here with eval uh, derive p, uh, like so. And here to clean this up a bit more, I could uh, get rid of these brackets by using, uh, for instance, this uh, dollar sign operator, which just has very low binding precedence, and so it uh, well, basically separates this term from this and it'll evaluate uh, this first. So it's like putting the, the stuff after the dollar operator in brackets. Okay, so this gives me a very concise implementation of this Newton poly function in terms of Newton, where I just feed it, uh, well, the polynomial function p, as well as the polynomial function given by the derivative of p. Now, uh, with that uh, idea in hand, we can also uh, quickly implement Newton poly 2, which is basically exactly the same thing, except that we uh, use Newton 2 instead of uh, Newton. All right, then let's uh, test out these functions. So let me call uh, Newton uh, poly first, and I'm going to call it with this polynomial uh, x squared uh, 
minus 2. Now here in this case, because I'm saying in the function declaration what type that this object should be, I don't need to explicitly uh, declare its type uh, as well. So here I can just write x squared minus 2. Uh, then I need to give it a starting value. I'll give it a starting value of 1. Then I need to give it a number of uh, iterations. So I'll say I want 5 uh, iterations again. And let's hope that this works. Uh, here it says variable not in scope. The reason for this is that I uh, forgot to reload the module. So let's reload and we see we get the same uh, approximation as we did uh, with, with just Newton. To see that this is indeed the case, I'm going to convert this to a floating point number by uh, using from rational. Okay, and we see that, uh, yes, indeed, we get the uh, square root 2. The same thing would work if I do Newton poly 2, and I now have to, instead of saying how many times I iterate it, I give it a tolerance, and I again get uh, square root 2, basically up to the, the specified tolerance. Okay. So I hope that uh, this video has uh, shown you how you can use uh, various types of uh, numbers that are already implemented in Haskell. I hope it's also shown you how you can go search the documentation and maybe find packages that do things that you would like to do. And moreover, you can see that, well, if you already have things like polynomials implemented and things like derivatives uh, already in the module you're using, then you can write very concise uh, implementations for uh, some reasonably uh, complicated functions.